Well, thank you for staying with us and welcome back to Morning Express. Now, without much ado, let's uh, delve straight into discussions about uh, the newspaper headlines just read out. Now, joining us in the studio is um, a patriotic Nigerian as well as the founder of the Nigerian Nexus, a non-profit organization in Nigeria aimed at enhancing uh, the dividends of democracy for the people at the grassroots and across the country, as well as promoting the unity in the country. Honorable Desmond uh, Olaro Waju 4B will be joining us in the studio at this moment. Hello and good morning, Honorable. It's wonderful to have you in the studio after such a very, very long time. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here again, and more importantly, that I will be talking to Nigerian on issues that shapes our social political life. It's a pleasure. Now, to begin with, it's no news following the outcome of the local government polls in three states, the landslide victories recorded by some parties. Basic conversations this morning are on how Governor Simon Life Obara outmaneuvered his predecessor, the FCT Minister Barristan Yeson Wike, pulling up a party largely unknown by many Nigerians in rivers and making them the party to look forward to. All the local government seats taken, the councillorship seats also taken by the APP in uh, River States. Do you think this was uh, monumental in terms of what the PDP had to lose despite coming on board with what the people of River States evidently casted at the ballot? You see, I have always said this and I maintain this that uh, power is indeed transient. And then what is important is the legacy you leave behind while you're in office. Yeah. And um, in the last nine months, thereabouts, going to one year, ever since the administration of uh, Governor Sim Fubara came on board as the number one person in River State, uh, his predecessor, uh, the former governor, Nyemseon Wiki, now Honorable Minister of FCT, have been having some internal issues that touch on uh, structures, structures, structures. And to some Nigerians, we do not understand what is the essence of this structure that we now have a number one person that is meant to run the affairs of the state. It is not sane for me as a person, my opinion, that we have a governor in the state and the structure of the state is being controlled by somebody far, hundreds of kilometers away in FCT. You see, it will cause a lot of distraction and, and maladministration and backwardness in the state. So we need to address this issue of Godfatherism. I am happy that Wike was one of the proponents against gov bad go uh, Godfather. Godfatherism. So I, Godfatherism. Yeah. I am surprised that he is gradually assuming that position that he had hardly talked against in the past while he was still enjoying uh, the office of, of, of being the number one person in the state because he was not ready to be loyal to any godfather, despite the fact that he did not only became a governor of River State, not without the help of them patient Jonathan and also Peter Audley. These are supposed to be the godmother and godfather. But when he was there as the governor, he shut the door against these people that were supposed to be the godfather. And he spoke strongly, emphatically, against godfatherism in Nigeria politics. So I was surprised and shocked. I was one of the persons who, I, who was very, very shocked at the happenings in River State, especially between the present, the incumbent governor and the past governor, the person of Palestinians on Wiki, which has, you know, taken us to another trend of issues, uh, conflict, reactions, that even the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, as Yuwaju Bola Ahmed Tunumu, had to intervene uh, in what was described as a peaceful intervention because the polity was being eat up at that time and there was fear in the air in River State that we do not want to move back into the era of rivers of blood. Because if you look at politics in River State, it has always climaxed in blood, sh blood shedding, shedding and all that. Yes. So we never wanted that. And that was why Ashiwa Jibwala meant Tinubu intervened. But ever as the intervention, it has been a cold war going on in the state that led to some, that almost uh, led into the impeachment 
of the same similar Fubara, the governor, and also there was back and front, even there was room, the, the, the National Assembly complex, the House of Assembly complex in Rivers, I beg your pardon, was burnt down. And there was even attempt to even assassinate the governor. There was a direct shooting of tear gas to the governor, you know, while he was trying to inspect what was happening during the era, during the time that it was alleged that it was burnt down by some elements in the state. Now, now, in all this, one thing a lot of people point to is his demeanor. People have said he was quiet. It, it almost seems as though he knew the next step to take and why he did not respond in a violent manner. He's also you charging know, this chairman uh, you, not to um, resort Bito, to violence. Bito, they say the gentility of a lion does not mean weakness. You know, you need to understand historically and the antecedent of the Ijo people. The Ijo people are one of the most strongest people in Nigeria. If you look at where they are coming from, I don't know where they generate that strength from, whether from the kai kind they used to drink or from the river they're coming from, I don't know. But Ijo people are not the kind of people that you can just knock. If you look at river states, the Ijo people, they cut across different tribes. Some of them, they are Buguma, they are, Calab they are Calabari, Marie. they are Okrika. All these people are Ijo because they are riverine people. They have something in common. They are just like the Fulani people. They are very strong. They, are, they might be quiet, but they are focused. They are determined. And they don't make noise until they want to eat a target. And they go for anything that they feel is justified. But I'm not interested in that because I'm an advocate of peace. I'm an advocate of democracy. I am an advocate of systems. I've advocated for functional system that delivers the dividend of government, dividend of democracy to the downtrodden, which are the people of the state. What is happening in River State today is not something that any student of peace or any student of political science will be happy because it is some or some or taking us backward. You know the implication of what is happening in River State right now is that there are some people who have good intention, even within the APC, even within the PDP, that were supposed to be on the ballot. But because of politics, some of them are disenfranchised from 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 part, from participating in, the in that election that now led to APP winning 22 out of 23 local government of River State. That is really uh, something I call this. It is a... Uh, Unfortunate because it is setting us backward democratically. This is not what we wished for Nigeria in 2024. We have pa we have gone past this stage long ago. The bad politics or the 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 right the bitter rivalry between Sim uh, Governor Sim and his godfather, his so-called godfather, Ian Somwike is really setting us backward democratically, democratically. And I want us to address this. I don't want any stakeholder in the country to take this with a levity. I want everybody to move into action, intervene, make some advocacy, and as well as advocate for peace in, and sue for peace in River State. Now, now, Honorable Desmond, talking about this, this enfranchisement that you mentioned, uh, we saw reports in the news that uh, the Wiki group or Wiki, a part of the PDP in River State, uh, paid some thugs to block off the local uh, government of councils. Course. Of course. So That's... that the newly elected um, chairman can't gain access into that. That's one. Also, they have decided to go to court to contest the outcome of this election mm. what are we looking at it, it appears as if and and mind you now other pdp governors are back in fubara against his godfather um barrison yes of wiki are we seeing a complete deterioration of law and order within the pdp's political space what has the people's democratic party become at this point what exactly what is happening in river state can can be largely described as what as um, lack of uh, rule of law and respect to the judgment. You know, I don't know how this country, uh, some people feel that they are powerful than the institution. They are more bigger than, than the constitution and the, you see them flagrant, disobe uh, flagrant or disobedient, disobedient to rules, to judgment of, 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 uh, of our jurisdiction, of court of jurisdiction. Yes. You know, that has always been part of our system. And this is something that is not good. Do you know that there was a judgment and some people, they decided to boycott the election because of politicking from, from us or from, because of politics from, from Abuja. I don't even know where we can stand, whether it's standing with the PDP 
or is standing with the APC. But it seems to like have influence on both APC and the PDP of the state. And it is only the governor that is the APC in the state, the PDP in the state, because they are tied. We came working for the APC government and claiming to be a strong leader of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, yes. has so much influence on the federal government and government machineries, as well as have influence on some APC member because he is working for APC, though he's a member of PDP. So all the mathematics actually failed him. He never expected that this thing would turn out this way, that the election will, will go forth. You know, there was a judgment of the High Court that the police should not provide security, and there was a judgment in also Abuja that the INEC should not give election materials. And then the state went ahead to say that we are going to ensure that this election go on because of the Supreme Court judgment That's our, that our, our location will not be going to any local government without proper or due elected officers into this 774 local government of the Federation. It was that judgment that the governor capitalized on. It was like a shock. The advisors to Wiki, APC, and PDP never saw that coming. It was like a shock. They never expected. What they were trying to do is to buy more time so that they can put their house in order. But it seems like the quietness and the gentility of Sim, Governor Sim, he has calculated ahead, he has planned ahead. It was like a surprise to Governor Wiki and the APC. Now, 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 Honorable Desmond, a lot of people have sort of questioned the credibility of the election in River yes. State in as much as the elections took place Somehow, the Governor Simi Fubara side won, even though under the guise of another political party. Yet, people have asked, how credible was it and how legal was the move? Uh, let me tell you something. That uh, takes us to a more critical issue about our election processes in this country. Yes. I've always had issues with our elections. You see, what played out in River State tells you that that judgment by the Supreme Court that uh, autonomy should be given to local government. It is not a win to the Nigerian people yet until INEC is the sole administrator in elections, conducting elections at the, prim at the local government level. When state is given that power to go ahead to conduct election, it is a mere caricature. It is a mere child's play. At the end of the day, only the people that, are, that were anointed by the state governor will eventually emerge, even when there is no uh, conflict. What I mean by when there, was, when there is no conflict is, in Lagos State, for example, there is no conflict. But believe me sincerely, at the end of the election, you'll find out that APC will win almost all the local government because there is a way the system favors only the, uh, the, the ruling party. And it happens in all states, even in, in uh, or your state, the same thing happened. Yes. In Delta State, the same thing will happen. In Sokoto State, the state governors, they have the way of rigging this election to favor only their party and favor only their anointed sons. So it is not a win yet. It's still robbing Peter to pay Paul. This is not a win for the Nigerian people. The federal government should have known this. Because most of the people who are now at the federal level, even Ashwajibola Metunumbu, he has enjoyed this. He knew how this thing works in Lagos State. There is no way any other party can contest election in the local government or in the councillorship election of the state when the umpire is the governor. When the governor is the person who is in charge of conducting this election, the election will always, always mark this word. Whether you conduct it in Abuja or you conduct this election anywhere in the state, in as much as the person who is in charge of the politics in the state is the governor and he appoints the person who conducts the election, at the end of the day, you will find out that only the governor's party and the governor, uh, governor's anointed sons and daughter will emerge 
as either the governor, the chairman, or the councillors. And this is not a good news to majority of the young people who think that the local government autonomy is a win for the Nigerian people until the federal government also work on the law that ensures that am amend the law that ensures that state can only oversee or participate or collaborate with INEC to deliver these elections. We are not having any headway. Now let's move to another item in the news and that's the third item. Much like River State, Benue and Akwaibum states also conducted their local government polls and particularly would start with Akwaibum states where despite the influence many would say of federal might, the number three citizen, the Senate president, talked about how even when he was governor, he had to allow for the process to be uninfluenced. He only won his local governments in the just concluded elections out of 31 local governments. <laughs> the PDP in Akwaibum, much of a landslide swept it. But the challenge now is in Benway where a lot of people are asking how it, it was almost as though other parties did not even rec record a significant amount of votes. Many are asking why we continue to grapple with issues like late arrival of materials. And once they deliver in one local government, you cannot say for sure that other polling units in wards would receive their materials. How do you think INEC can improve on its delivery of on time material. let's guess it right it is not INEC why it's so? not INEC that conducts elections local government elections is conduct is a primary assignment of, of the, the state, state government which is still which, which INEC is, is more or less like an observer but they have the state resident electoral commission which is still a just to announce the results the people it is the state it is the state that employs just like all this ad hoc it is the state responsibility that employ ad hoc staffs engage their staff because they have a commission they have a election commission in the state where they have employees just like INEC. that is what i was trying to say earlier on while we we're talking about rivers election and that's what i'm asking people are asking that i know the law the law the law the, there has to be an amendment there has to be a bill there has to be an amendment to how this election is being conducted what sort of amendment are you talking about on a complete uh overhaul overall of the state's power to carry out local government elections since there is now an autonomy that means that is an institution local government is now an institution of its own if you allow the state to continue to to conduct election for them it means they are not autonomous but, 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 but in the case of river state it appeared that INEC no. wasn't just INEC wasn't just observing they were hands-on with the election. Remember that the situation, that was, the situation uh, the law that on, on, on the issue of releasing voter, voter register. register exactly. That, yes. So Heineck did not even participate according to law, according to the law, according to the judgment of the High Court. We need to understand this. And even if Heineck participates in this election, try to understand what is their rules. What is, the, what is the role of INEC in local government election as of today, 2024? So it will help us to understand some of the challenge we have in Nigeria electoral. Are you saying they are, they are only serving a supervisory, supervisory role and not role necessarily it is a states, conducting role? It is state that conducts elections. And do you think this, 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 this responsibility on the states would still be hampering the local governments? Of course. It will affect... The, it will affect like what is the essence of autonomous when it will speed up development at the local level but right now with the happenings and the development it seems that you just like when you give somebody uh, uh, goats and you are still hold with holding the rope instead of you to release the goat to the person you are still holding the rope that is how it looks like in local government you cannot say you're giving them autonomy when the person who controls the money is still the governor how do i mean i mean only his appointees only his anointed sons get to win these elections and in the end they are still answerable not to the people but to the governor and that is why we cannot see any development that the policy of local government autonomy was supposed to engineer in the first instance and that is why i am calling on all well-meaning nigerians and all the government institution that is saddled with the responsibility to ensure that there is poverty in our local government affairs. Even the number one person in the country, Ashwajibola Mechunubu, to, to borrow leave 
from what is happening in our state today with his own personal experience as a former governor of Lagos State in 1999 to ensure that he gives adequate powers to INEC to conduct election for primary local government. There is no election in Nigeria that is not important. The federal government election the, is, a, is important. State government elections, they are important. And local government elections, they are more important. And that we should take it with all seriousness. Because as it is presently, it seems that the federal government is not taking the local government election seriously. And if you, that is why the governors are now given the responsibility to manage. it. Right? Yes. So the idea now is that if we must have that desired development at the local government, it is therefore important for this process to be free, to be free and credible and to be fair to all concerns because all concerns means all parties so do we tie all this parties to... like labor party app pdp aac aa accord all parties must be having fair so do we tie this advocacy for electoral reforms to the need for a new constitution as it were it should be part of the issues that should be discussed in the new constitution. Constitution. It is very important. Now, now Honorable Desmond, let's uh, turn our attention still on local government elections, but now uh, talking about the credibility of the elections and also states who are sort of refusing to hold these elections in a credible way. Uh, the social, the socio economic uh, rights and accountability Sorry. project, Serap, you know, this morning made a call on President Bola Metinbu to withhold state allocations to states that are refusing to conduct LG polls in a credible way. What do you make of this <laughs> of this development? Because it appears that Serap always makes calls like this. Uh, they, see, they yes, they, they they show concern, see, but but how effective is it? Uh, why I want to appreciate them because they are civil. Uh, move right uh, movement group uh, because they are non-profit organization that are there to see how they can contribute to the development of Nigeria yes. and democratical institution and strengthen democratic uh, institution in Nigeria. So I give it to them. But it is mere, you see the issue with Nigeria should be moved from mere advocacy to mobilization of actions. There are a lot of people who are yet to consider themselves as a partner in progress. And the majority of these box rest on the lives of millions of Nigerians who always show this I don't care attitude towards civic engagement. It is important, you know, as I speak to you now, should you okay, that only about 10% or 15% of the country total population are involved in all these issues of elections, governance, policy, monitoring, evaluation, uh, auditing. Majority of the Nigerians that are, their lives are affected by these policies, by these laws, and even by these elections are less concerned. So, Serap should do more than just this political hunting and this uh, being uh, all this uh, issue of political. This is to be more sincere fight to liberate this country by carrying out more mobilization of people, educating people of the need for them to participate in election processes. Now, you're talking about credibility of elections. How can an election be credible when majority of the people are not included in the process of elections? What, 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 majority, of, what majority of people not, are you talking about? It is not about? completely the fault of the government. It is not completely the fault of the, the uh, state electoral commission. It is not completely the fault of the political party, but the fault of the people who do not consider themselves partners. Or who do not even understand the importance. So, so are we dealing with an issue of political apathy in this case? It is an apathy. What is the cause of apathy? Largely, a lot of people do not even understand their rights as citizens and their role and responsibilities. A lot of Nigerians are still uneducated, no matter how you want to paint it. Some people are educated, so to say, have degrees, half HND, but yet they are not educated about civic engagement and responsibility. And that is where we have a major problem. And that is why Nigeria is still grappling with underdevelopment. 
If more Nigerians, because you are talking about inclusivity, democracy advocates advocates for inclusivity of more people to be involved in the democratic processes and development of the state. Now, when you personally disenfranchise yourself, remove yourself from the process, it will come back to affect you because of the quality of delivery. Do two policies or under delivery. Yes, under delivery or quality of delivery through the policies. The policies will shape our life. And then you need to be involved in this policy framework and development. You need to understand why this policy is favoring X, Y, and Z. Why not Z, Y, and Z? So it is important we understand that until we get involved. We are not saying you should come, you should be, you should contest for election. We are not saying you should appear on ballots. We are not saying you should be a member of a political party. But we are involved. only saying is that you must be involved in the day-to-day -day running of governance in your local government, in your state, in your sub-region, and in the country. And that is what we are saying. And that is the only way out from all these things. So saying that election is credible or not credible is not a question. It is the question is, who is there to say or to confirm that the election is credible? Is it not the people? And the most of the people that are involved in these processes, some of them have been bought. Even the observers were bought. Even some of the police were bought. So there, we, there are no people there to ensure that people do the needful. And because of our numbers, if more numbers join this process, it is not possible for them to buy, to buy anybody. So they will rather give up and do the right thing. So when the people are minute, it is easy to buy them. It is even easy to, to be corrupt when less people are involved in the process. But when we have more people, because it is impossible to fool all the people at the same time, that is why it is more important for more Nigerians to be involved in these processes, thereby we can reduce corruption. See, the easy way to reduce corruption and to ensure poverty, transparency, and accountability is the involvement of more numbers of people, whether educated or illiterate. Now, in moving on to another issue in the news this morning, uh, it's about the salaries and remuneration of elected political office holders. Now, we're told by the leadership newspaper earlier this morning that the APC reps are fuming over a salary deduction for Senator Monday or Pebolo. Now, issues of remuneration and salary of elected office holders continues to elicit a lot of debates. And uh, now with the ruling party and its representatives talking about the situation in a do state do you think that this is unfair in a way or is it in keeping with the need to call for a cut in the cost of governance well you see there are fundamental issues surrounding this salary scaling and remuneration especially around these ex governors senators and all that do you know that there are so many ex governor that are now senators that still collect what they call pension from their states, that still collect salaries. They collect salary. Their pension is the same thing with their salary. When they were when they were why they are out of office, why they are out of office and getting another payment, remuneration from another institution of government, they are collecting money from their state and still collecting money from the federal government, maybe from the senate or from even some appointments. And it has been like that, and nobody is checking it. Because the money is paid to them by the state government, not from the federal government. But still, it's government, government is government. So there is this problem in Nigeria that I feel like the territories of the government, they are not working collaboratively to deliver governance to the people. They are only self-centered and selfish to protect only their interests. And that is why we are still going front and back with salary, um, not remittance of uh, remuneration to elected officers and all that. The question is this. You cannot tell me that as an elected officer into Senate from the ex ex executive, you are still expecting to be paid from the office. It is not fair. So. The people, the fiscal mobilization and remuneration, they need to look at who is supposed to be paid and who is not supposed to be paid. But right now, I think there is no law. The reason why you see this lacuna is because there is no strong law that is against it. So some of these loopholes, you know, the laws cannot be perfect. 
But why I am worried is that these things have been lingering for so long, and yet the concerns are not taking any action, any serious action. Who are the concerned? The National Assembly. The National Assembly are supposed to come up with legal framework, with hearts that ensure that there is correction to these anomalies. But they ignored because they are also beneficiaries of that same, uh, same thing. So, in cutting down governance expenses, it is important we check all these things and put all these things in check. There are some people who are not expected to be paid. Now, could this be the reason why our cost of governance keeps skyrocketing yes, because it goes year to, after it year goes after into year? Recurrent. Some of these double salaries pay, being paid in National Assembly and expected to be paid in the state are uh, being paid in the state and still collect salary in National Assembly. It goes into the recurrent. When you know about uh, um, budget allocation, yes. allocating, mm -hmm. you hear what they call capital expenditure and recurrent Current expenditure. expenditure. Ca ca capital, capital expenditure means new project that delivers life, uh, uh, that economic prosperity to the people. That's what it means. Now, it's not everybody that is captured in government. So when Nigeria should understand, when you have the issue of budget, like you have the capital expenditure and you have the recurrent expenditure. The capital expenditure, in most times, they are 25 percent. Yes. They are 12 percent. That is what captures the people who are not who are not earning salary. Oh. That 25 percent, that 12 percent, that 5 percent is the only thing left for the people who are not captured into government salary. The multitude of the masses. The multitude of the masses. You see the 75 percent. The 80%, the 90% yes. is only servicing the people who are captured in the net of government. Those who collect salary, those who are government appointees, uh, of elected officers. So that is why our constitution and our budget is not fair to the majority of the people. Otherwise, budgeting should be 50-50. 50% for capital expenditure, 50% for recurrent expenditure. In that way, we can create more jobs. We can create employment opportunity. We can deliver the dividend of democracy to the Nigerian people. And that is why, personally, we need to get involved because a lot of people do not understand. All the things we are speaking here, yes. it is uh, it's babash to them. They don't understand why this is well, 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 how about you simplify it in very simple terms? That we have just about two to three minutes to wrap that up this discussion. That is why I'm saying that it is not about listening to people talking and then... Uh, all these people they are lying. We are not all lying. We are telling you what you should be involved in. We are saying that if Nigeria will deliver your dream to you as a as a Nigerian, whether you like it or not, whether you like the elected officers or not, you need to monitor what they are doing. They are public officers. They are meant to serve you. So if you look at all the government appointees, and you cannot say to yourself that oh, this thing I am enjoying, this thing that I need. This is the person responsible for it, and this is the person who is supposed to deliver these things to me. Then, you are the one shooting yourself on the foot. You need to know who is responsible for my hospital, who is responsible for my power, who is responsible for that potholes in your streets, who is responsible to provide security, who is responsible to ensure that there is petrol, there is fuel. So when you begin to ask yourself this question as a human being, that means you are beginning to get interested in governance. And then when you now take a bit step further by aligning yourself with an organization to that is in that is talking about policies, and then you are now asking questions, you are now involved. Asking questions alone, constructively, and directing your question to the right quarters. It's governance. You are involved in the government. But not asking questions, folding your hands, anything you see, anything federal government does, you accept it, you complain, you are causing more problems. So what I'm saying is that anytime you see what you don't like as a people, you guys can mobilize yourself together, write, a, write those problems down, yes. take it to the local council. The, the nearest government to the people is the local council. In Abuja, for example, there is AMAC. Write all your complaints, some of the things that you do not like in your streets, in your area, in your environment. Write it in the paper, write your name and sign it, and take it to the local council that you need answer to some of these things. From there, they will direct you to the people who are responsible or who should be responsible to cater for those needs. By so doing, you are part of government. And then, at the end of the day, you'll be enjoying the dividend of government because you'll be calling the attention of government to some of those needs. 
All right. Well, uh, it couldn't have been said any better than uh, what you have rightly put out there, Honorable Desmond. But I must thank you. This is all time will permit us to take on the program or this particular segment of uh, Morning Express. It's always a pleasure to have you in the studio uh, to share your deep wealth of knowledge with us. Thank you so much. And the pleasure is all mine. Thank you.